Why was Russia so ineffective against Japan during the Russo-Japanese War 1904-1905? Was Russia that bad or was Japan that good and why? That's what you will learn today. In this video, I'll talk about the Russo-Japanese War. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. And if you're happy to be new, my name is Stefan. I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you. And if you like that, then please consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. When the 20th century arrived, Russian Tsar Nicholas II was unpopular to say the least. And his country, the Russian Empire, was in political turmoil. To strengthen his reign, he aimed for eastward expansion at the expense of the Chinese Qing Dynasty, which was in decline. During the Chinese Boxer Rebellion, an Eighth Nation Alliance, Russia was part of this, was sent to China to crush this uprising and with success. As a result of this, the Russian force remained in Manchuria, northern region of China. This force was expanded on the orders of the Tsar, who seized control of a Port Arthur, which was an ice-free port that was of great use for the Russians. And this all greatly annoyed the Japanese. See, the Japanese had defeated the Chinese at the end of the 19th century during the First Sino-Japanese War. Japan had come out of its two century long self-isolation and was now on its way of becoming a superpower by rapid modernization and aggressive expansionism. Its achieved gains during the war with China were nullified by international pressure Russia also attributed to this. And thus, tensions between the two empires were rising. And war came in February 1904, when the Japanese launched a surprise attack on the Russian fleet near Port Arthur. The Russian squadron consisted of seven battleships and six cruisers in which two battleships and one cruiser were torpedoed. On February 10th, the Japanese Empire declared war on Russia. The Tsar and his advisors took victory for granted. Kuropatkin, Russian commander, claimed he would need only two Russian soldiers for every three Japanese. So superior were they to the Asians. The Russian propaganda portrayed the Japanese as slit-eyed monkeys that were no match for the Russian soldier. People from the Russian middle class spoke about how European civilization needed to be defended against the Asiatic hordes. It seemed that there was some unity in the by now so divided Russian Empire and if the war would be won, it would mean the regain of the prestige of Tsar Nicholas II. Only it became a disaster. What went wrong? Logistical issues played a major part. See, geography had been of advantage to the Russians when the Napoleonic armies invaded the country because the Russians could retreat further and further without running the risk that their country might be fully occupied by the enemy since Russia stretched from Eastern Europe to East Asia. Now things were different. See, most industries and most people and therefore most soldiers were located in the west of the country. And they had to fight a war 10,000 kilometers away. But what hindered the Russians the most in this war was their incapable command. So let's take a look at the Russian Imperial Army of 1904. It had excellent units, but its second line troops were of much poorer quality. And the troops located in the Eastern Military District belonged to the latter category. When looking at command, we see that in an empire where power was exercised in the name of an absolute ruler by right of birth, those who found themselves in high command held their positions due to their connections, not because of their competence. The top was immovable conservative, so there was little to no room for innovation. Therefore, those in the lower officer corps were frustrated individuals who often ignored orders and had a bad morale. Speaking of orders, due to the centralized command structure and military bureaucracy, decisions and rapid responses were often delayed. Looking at the soldiers class, well these consisted mostly out of peasants. 
These men initially were motivated because of their traditional virtues of patriotism and religion. Yet, because of the poor command structure, morale soon plummeted. When war broke out, the Russians had around 150,000 men in the east, including around 250 pieces of artillery. The territorial army of Japan counted for 123,500 men with 300 field guns. Both the officers and the rank and file soldiers were well motivated with clear idea of their goals and were trained effectively. And the Russians, they underestimated the Japanese, which was also due to racial prejudices. The Japanese leadership proved much more energetic and believed in victory. Interesting enough is that because the soldiers were taken better care of, they caused less harm to the local Chinese population and the Japanese at that point still agreed to the loss of war and treated Russian POWs humane. The view towards this would later drastically change as we saw their conduct in the 1930s and 40s. What is similar were their often suicidal charges on Russian positions that led to many casualties. When we look at military innovations, we see some new things on the battlefield. For example, the machine gun. Yes, machine guns, Gatling guns were used in the American Civil War, but only in less amounts. Yes, machine guns were used in colonial wars. But now, both warring nations use them on a wide scale. Around 50% of the casualties were due to the machine gun. Observers, they drew lessons, but not the right lessons. They overvalued attacking spirit. However, as we later saw with the outbreak of the First World War, this was no match for the devastating power of the machine gun. And then there were also trenches, which was a fourth taste to the First World War. And both sides made use of observation balloons. Mid-February 1905, the Japanese First Army lands at Shemope, Incheon, Korea, and marched north. At the end of April, they encountered the Russians, and the Battle of Yalu River leads to a Japanese victory. Earlier that month, Russian Vice Admiral Makarov dies when his flagship is sunk by a mine, which greatly damaged Russian morale. Early May, the Japanese 2nd Army lands at Liatung Peninsula. At the end of that month, the Battle of Nanshang followed, in which the Japanese overcome the weak Russian defenses. Early June, the Japanese 3rd Army moves out to take Port Dalny and isolates Port Arthur. Mid-June, the Russians attack at the Battle of Telisu, north of Port Arthur, and fail. On August 10th, the naval battle of the Yellow Sea leads to a Japanese victory. The Russian ships pull back to Port Arthur. The Japanese lay siege on the coastal place, which had a 45,000 strong garrison, with strong emplacements, with tunnels, concrete, wire entanglements and artillery. At the end of that month, the Battle of Liaoyang ended in a stalemate, but due to the bad control and communications, the Russian units retreat to the north. In October, the Russians hoped to relieve the besieged Port Arthur and find the Japanese at Shaho. They claim victory, but failed to advance toward the coastal place. Winter is now upon them. Meanwhile, the siege of Port Arthur continues as the Japanese artillery disables the Russian warships in the harbor and takes several hills around the area. In December, the Japanese take several more strong points and early January 1905, Port Arthur surrenders. And as the war went from bad to worse, the opposition to the Russian government grew because of its incompetence to handle this war. While the war was still going on, the Russian Revolution of 1905 broke out. The Russians still had to suffer their biggest defeat yet, which happened during the Battle of Mukden, February, March 1905, where the Russians suffered 40,000 dead or captured and 49,000 wounded. Japan had only 16,000 dead and 60,000 wounded. And then, at the end of May, the decisive naval battle of the war between the Russian fleet that had sailed a seven-month voyage from the Baltic Sea around Cape of Good Hope, the British denied them access through the Suez Canal since they had fired on British ships. During this battle of Tsushima, the Japanese achieved victory. Russia's will to fight on was over after these enormous defeats. In September 1905, the war would come to an official end with the Treaty of Portsmouth, 
in which the US mediated. Russia was humiliated and Japan was now on its way to become a true global superpower. Russia now had also a revolution to deal with. The Russian Revolution of 1905, I will discuss that in the future episode. Thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, RL and Coolin Castleman. If you want to know more about how the Russians were successfully fighting against the Japanese, which happened in the very last stages of the Second World War, you can click right here to check out the video about the end of the war in the Pacific. Subscribe and check me out on Patreon because with your donations I can keep doing this and expand. Thanks.